It's amp install time. What's up everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Visions with two Zs. So I'm gonna start running the wires and everything for the amps. Um, I didn't charge my GoPro cause this is kind of like a last minute type thing. I wasn't really gonna do it today, but I was like, well, I might as well get started. I got a few, had a couple things canceled. So I got a few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and probably start. So I'm not going to go all the way and do the whole time lapse because again, I don't have my GoPro and my phone doesn't have that much space. And I don't feel like setting up the big cameras and all that stuff for this. And so I'm just gonna kind of do highlights and kind of go through it um, as I go. So, but there's a couple things that I definitely want to show. Just don't know if I'm gonna get to that today or not. So. Um, what I'm gonna do is first take all the panels and stuff off, going through the um, all the panels going from the front to the back. And I definitely wanna highlight the um, taking out of this panel here for the sub. Let me drop that to see. Cause there are a couple things about taking this panel out to get to the sub that we'll kinda of wanna go over. But everything else, I just covered my cup. So, but everything else is um, pretty standard. Just clips and you pull them up. So I'll jump back on here while I get to the back and let's just go. It's the Visions 2Zs, let's go. What's up everybody? All right, um, so about an hour in, got, the, um, got a lot of the um, panels off, but I wanted to wait and kind of go over the panel removal for the sub, but while I'm at it, and please excuse my car, I need to get it vacuum. I need to vacuum it out. So the factory amp is up here on the, so here's the dash on the passenger side and you remove the bottom panel, you remove the side panel and you remove the um, kick panel or the foot panel or the, whatever you call this one. So the factory amp is here. If you're gonna be wiring into the factory wire, into the factory speaker wiring, you use the, this plug here. This is um plug A, I believe it is. So you use this first one. Do not use this this one here. This one goes back to the um the head unit. So you use this one here, and this is the actual wiring harness. that you will use to go into, if you wanna use the existing speaker wires. So um, I found conflicting um, diagrams so far about, cause some of the wiring colors that I have, I have most of them. And this is, by the way, this is the base. This is not the technology, the advanced or technology package. This is the base. So I noticed I don't have maybe one or two of the wires that they talk about. So I'm going to try out a few combinations. I think the pinout should still be the same, just might use different wire colors for based on the year. So what I'm going to do is I'll try it out and then I'll have a definitive answer in the video later on. But let's go back to the back of the car. All right, so this is the rear panel for the sub. Now everything I've read, I haven't done it yet. So I can tell you definitively if it is or not. There's a screw back here. There's a screw here. There's a screw here behind this. And then under here, I might have to go to the front. Man, these kids are horrible. They're gonna come clean this car. This is ridiculous. But um, uh, let me go. Let me, let me see if I can get it from the front. Knocking stuff off, knocking stuff over. Uh, I gotta let the seat up. All right, iPhone life. Had to delete some stuff. So, um, yeah, you can't even see it. It's back. It's back there somewhere. But you probably have to feel for it. 
Yeah, you can see it a little bit. It's back there, right there. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that and then I'll be right back to you guys. All right, just like that and it's out. So one thing, no screw there, nothing at all. But you do have clips, which I figured you would have clips pretty much all the way around it. Let me go on and pay attention. So you do have clips all the way around. They have to pop out. And then it pretty much just, you can, you have to finagle and kind of work it out a little bit. Don't pay attention to my amps. These are old amps and they look horrid. They had a hard knock life, but they still work. They're not cute, but they, they handle, they don't handle business for this particular application. So yeah, so next, I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw the, they might go ahead just throw the sub in there and just see what it look like. So, and hope to God that it fits. So, all right, stay tuned. Be right back. All right, so popped out the sub. See the MV over here in the factory sub. Interestingly enough, rubber surround, which is kind of not really surprising, but it's a shallow mount just like the MV, and it looks like it's going to be almost a, I can set them up side by side. They look like they're gonna, look like it's probably gonna be a direct drop in, which is cool into the box. So I was kind of concerned about that. So we'll see how this is gonna work out. Um, just wanted to kind of drop it in and see, here's a kit, here's the, the enclosure. Not a whole lot of airspace in there, but we'll see. We'll see what's gonna happen. Then I might try to hook it up to the factory amp, which is gonna be a joke, but I just want to see what it does. So um, we'll get back. All right, everybody, everything is in. Um, kind of wanted to um, go over a couple things before I actually button everything up and finish tightening everything up. But so this is the first thing. So this is where all of the existing wires for going to the existing speakers. So that allows me to be able to just use these plugs to um, get focus. Yeah. So, so I can just plug directly into the um, to the speakers where they have to the, the existing wires. So in the event ever I wanted to go back to stock, it'd be pretty plug and play. So I use these to tap into the wires rather than cutting the wires because again i didn't want to cut the original wire harness so i tapped all the wires for all the um the speakers and then i ran them to the back these are all my rca wires and rcas and amp turn on and everything so i have it zip tied i'm gonna tuck i'm gonna zip tie them a little better once i'm ready to tuck it in all this extra here so um, got everything running down through the back down through the through the um the kick panels or foot panels or whatever you call these things wiring through here i haven't so this is how of course i'll look but i need to put the rear the rear um panel back on so let's get back here to the amps excuse the car i need to clean it out and Clean it out still and vacuum and all that stuff. So the AMSA, AMSA mounted. Again, they've had a hard life, boy, but they still, they still work. And I will say it sounds amazing. Um, so as you can see, stock woofer back in there. Um, I put the MB quarter in there and it sounded really, really flat. Um, it sounded pretty decent, but I just don't think the box was, um, I don't think the box was quite big enough because it sounded kind of flat. So I, I filled it with polyfill and just put the stock speaker in. When I put the polyfill in with the MB Quart, it sounded better, but still on some notes it sounded pretty flat. So I just went with the stock with the stock woofer and um, ran everything through here. So it just, everything should tuck really nicely behind the rear panel. And I wired, I wired it in a I wired the voice calls because they are dual voice call. The um, subwoofer is dual voice call. So I am bridging the amp, but I wired it in a series. So that, for those who don't know, that means basically you take the positive terminal, you take the positive terminal from 
one voice coil and the negative terminal from the other voice coil. Wire them two together so you're left with a positive and a negative and then you just bridge your amp. So that means the amp should see a, the amp should see a probably a, I don't know, that's one thing I don't know about this, this, this Wolver. I don't know if it's, I believe if, I believe they're four ohm. It should be four ohm voice coils, but it may be two ohm. But the amp should see, it's not cutting out or anything. So it's probably seeing like a, a four ohm load at the amp and then bridge it down to two ohms. So um, don't want to blow it. So that's why I just wired in a series. And plus this amp is already running pretty, it's running pretty warm anyway with the cover on it. So I need to figure, so that's one thing I need to figure out. I'm thinking about doing some fans on each side so I can have, so I can have air coming from here all the way across, across the fence, across the amp. But I haven't decided on that one yet. So I just need to figure it out. So I might just run it with the cover off. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it everybody. I mean, came out amazing. It sounds so much better. Um, this is not gonna be the end of this series cause I'm pretty sure I'm gonna probably do some more tweaking and man, I really gotta put this stuff back together. It looks horrible, but um, still gotta do some more tweaking and might, may or may not change a couple things, but you know, we'll see. So, um, but hey, so the next video, I will probably try to do a listening, but I don't know yet. We gotta figure that out. So anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all ride with me. Um, I'm not gonna say the first project is complete, but the first project is at a complete type state. Oh, one more thing. I didn't wanna cut through the firewall. So I couldn't find a grommet. No, I couldn't find one. I mean, I've seen other people say they found one. I couldn't find it to get through the firewall. So I'm basically, and I don't like doing this, but I'm basically running it, finger, running it through, through here, through the fender. It comes out of the fender and this drops down and I'm coming in through the, um, through the wire, the harness or coming through the boot that comes from the door. All right, so my phone ran out of space before I could finish recording my outro. But there's a couple things I wanted to touch on before I close out this video. Um, the background noise, I'm in the car right now. I just wanted to get this um, get this out. Um, the, the install has actually been done for a little over a year. And I just wanted to kind of get this video out. I've had a couple questions on previous videos and a couple comments. And I've been kind of sitting on this stuff for the last year. So I just want to get this out. And what a better time to record something than while I'm in the car. So... Earlier in the video, I showed where I used this plug, the second plug to run the wires for the speakers, rather than just wiring them myself. And I did that because I just did not want to have to run through, run speaker wires through the doors and drop wires from the dash and the like. And I could get away with that because I'm using, you know, a lower power amplifier. My amp is probably about 300 watts. So the existing wiring, it will be fine. Unless I'm, if I was using like a higher power amplifier, something upwards around six, 700 watts, then yeah, I'll, I would definitely rewire everything and use a higher gauge, higher quality speaker wire. But most modern cars will be fine up to about 400, 450 watts without an issue. And again, like I said, I've had this installed now for over a year and it's been fine. I haven't noticed any problems whatsoever. So while we're talking about the wiring, I mentioned to not use this first plug. Now this first plug was, if you're keeping your factory head unit, you'll want to use this first plug. This is where you will wire your line on converter or something like an audio control LC6 or something like that you will wire that to this first to the wiring and this first plug which would give you your rcas to wire run back to your amplifiers um for me i got rid of my factory head and upgraded a head unit so i did not need to use this plug the second plug are the outputs which goes out to the speakers which is the ones that i used so while we're talking about the wiring i um found this wiring guide on the internet and the coloring for the wires differed slightly um 
for the most part, they were the same, but they did differ slightly. But the pinouts are the same. So once you find that first set, then if you follow the pinouts from that point forward, it'll wire perfectly to all the speakers. And I ran everything, even the center channel, through here to my amplifier and my amp, and it runs it runs perfectly. Speaking of the center channel, I what I ended up doing, I wired my center channel to the front channel, but I bridged the center channel. I know it sounds crazy. So I'm running a old school triamp setup for the front. So I have the left and right door speakers and stereo and I wire the center channel bridged on the front channel. Amp runs cool. It doesn't hurt the amp. Now I know it's like you're probably thinking, well, you're putting a lot of power to a three and a half inch center channel. Yes and no, because now I'm splitting it across three speakers. And I, I've talked to a couple audio shops and they were like, you don't want to do that. That's going to kill it. That's not going to work. It's been working for over a year and it actually sounds good. But I wanted to retain a center channel, but I didn't want to go and invest in like a processor or a five channel amplifier or something like that. I didn't want to do all that because, again, this was kind of a budget build. But I still wanted to have a mono signal going to a center channel and I wanted to have my center channel I wanted to have that front sound stage and I tried it both ways with and without and it's a noticeable difference so I do have an 800 hertz bass blocker on the center channel so that I'm just getting mostly mostly vocals and it sounds good it images well and it just sounds really good so like I said, I've had this installed now for a little over a year and it's been perfect. Now I have had to make a few changes. Um, I was kind of forced to make a couple changes to the setup, which I guess I need to do another video to go over and kind of give you an update. So drop drop a comment down if you want to see the updates, man. Um, but yeah, like again, I've been running this for over a year and it's, it's been great. I highly recommend if you are anybody that likes to listen to music and you're in your car a lot, I highly recommend going through this setup. It's not that bad of an install and it makes a huge difference. I mean, it's a huge difference over stock. So yeah, it's your boy, Mr. Visions, and we out.